uh, let's see some activated charcoal to make this rim now I can't take it out because I've already kind of shaped it in and it's pretty fragile there now I have these two pieces of wood blocks here to hold it in place um, kind of grip it to the mow there until I'm ready to use it so hopefully when I pour the soap it doesn't go behind in the rim part I'm also going to be using some kaolin clay I have some um, titanium dioxide for whitening the soap if I need to I have some cocoa co oh boy some coconut milk some coconut milk I have this is the aconet uh, powder that I use in the first uh, to make the rim of the soap that's going to be the rim for the soap I also use like I said some cocoa powder and some black activated charcoal here I have some uh, mad micas that I'm going to be using. This one's called Paw Paw Purple. I'm actually going to be using three of these today. Let's see. I have some, um, this one's called the Monatica P. Now I'm going to use this for the green to kind of represent the leaves of the flowers and the stems of the flowers. I also have some bright yellow raincoat mica that I'm gonna be using for, I don't know, sunshine, just to give it that really bright, um, happy look. I'm using for my fragrance oil, Earth and Wood by Sun Essential Oils. Hopefully, it'll do me good today. <laughs> it doesn't seize up or anything. Hopefully, it won't do that. I'm also going to be doing uh, the heat tr transfer method. And what that means is you don't have to have your oils and butters at the same temperature as your live uh, solution. So I'm all geared up. I have my gloves. I have my goggles on. I have some long sleeves on. Anytime you're making, boy, <laughs> anytime you're making cold processed soap, uh, anytime you're using lye or uh, sodium hydroxide, you need to have some gloves some goggles and some long sleeves and some shoes on some closed in shoes just in case you spill now I was pretty shaky there but I didn't spill thank goodness <laughs> now this this method usually take four to seven minutes to melt I've been doing this method for a while it doesn't seem to affect my soap it does heat up but I notice it cools down enough that when I want to make sure my soap is fluent enough it's not a problem so I speeded up the video a little bit there so that we can uh, go a little bit faster there okay I'm just going to bring uh, bring the soap to a light trace there I just added some um, kaolin clay as you can see there I'm just trying to Make sure I don't, you know, whip it too much there <laughs> and get it too thick there. Let's see. Now, I'm not going to talk all the way through the video, but I will come back in and out of the video and let you know what I'm doing there. Now, I'm adding some coconut milk. I love using the coconut milk. It really makes the soap feel so luxurious there. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pour some over into my. Good night, sweetie. <laughs> that was my little granddaughter, Annabella. Good night, Annabella. Hey, good night, Nana. <laughs> Alrighty. Pour some over into my green here. And as you can see, I'm stirring it pretty fast there. Okay, I'm just going to give it just a little bit of a whoop there, not too much. And the yellow, I love using the yellow. It's so bright, it's just, I don't know, it's just a happy color, along with my purple, of course. <laughs> When I chose that movie, The Color Purple, it just seems like it was me. 
there were so many scenes in that movie that I, I cried, I laughed, I was just so happy. I've watched that movie, I don't know how many times. I can't even ima- I can't even guess how many times that I've watched it over and over. It's it's such a classic, it's such a beautiful classic movie. Now, the soap that I've done already here with the rim, it's called a rim soap, and what that means is I have these four sides here that when I pour the soap into it and take the soap out of the mold, it's going to have like this uh, rim around it. That was one of the things that Glenda uh, suggested that we would use to put in uh, to make our soap with. It wasn't like you had to do it, but that was one of the th- one of the uh, ideals that came up. And so I just thought, well, I'll just stick to that idea. Although I had a pretty tough time with this making the rim, you know, having to cut the soap down to try really hard to make sure all the size was even and matched up. Some of it, one side is a little bit thinner, so that's why I didn't show you what it was. But I tried to do a wood grain, so uh, the rim is actually kind of a wood grain look to it. Okay. My yellow looks like it had kind of riced up a little bit there. But hopefully it will be all right in the curing process. We shall see. <laughs> Okay, yeah, even the purple is kind of a ricey looking. It's kind of clunky looking like. So I don't think that fragrance oil was the best one to use for this project. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. Me and these fragrance oils lately, we have not been friends. Now I'm going to be using these the glass stirrers here just to stir it up just a little bit. Not too much, and as you can see the yellow has that clunk look to it, kind of rice and look. So hopefully it, it doesn't affect the design. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> we shall see how that turns out. Okay. I'm going to uh, let this sit up and then I'm going to pipe some um, soap on top as well. Here I'm just basically piping what I was trying to make was grass. I was trying hard to use uh, this to make grass, but <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm doing a good job here. I mean, the picture of the tip that I was using is one that can actually make grass, but I don't know if my ice, I don't think anything's wrong with my soap ice, and I think it's just me not knowing how to pipe it. <laughs> Now here I am adding some purple flowers. This is what really I was hoping to make it more, you know, purple like the color purple. But if you notice the flowers in the color purple is a little bit more, I don't know, fuchsia looking maybe or something. Kind of a pinkish. But anyway, they were supposed to be the color purple. So these are actually purple with some yellow centers in them. So, I've got a lot at them. I also have some little hearts that I'm adding onto the soap also. Okay, I am back. 
all my hard work with all those flowers. This is what I got. <laughs> uh, I actually put the soap, uh, I cut the stove on uh, to 270 and then I put my soap in with the oven off. But for some reason it overheated. Now I'm not sure if it's the fragrance oil. I'm not sure what caused this. This has happened to me before. Uh, it very well could be the rim soap, something mixed with, I don't know what happened, but we shall see how this cut. Also, hopefully I can save this. Um, I think I still have some more of the purple soap dough. Thank goodness these are soap dough flowers because if they was melting poor, I don't think I'd have any on top of the soap at all. But I'm going to see how this turn out. Now as you can see, I've taken out the mold, and you can see the rim. I don't know if you can see if I can get a better picture here of the rim. It seems a little bit oily. Um, still pretty soft. Well, the rim part's not soft, but it feels a little oily there. So I'm not sure what's going on with my formulation. Everything was, I've made that. I did that recipe before and everything was fine. But I started having some ricin with the fragrance oil. So I'm not sure if the fragrance oil uh, had an effect on the soap or not. I'm not sure. Uh, but I will cut this and we shall see what we have here. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really like how the rim soap, the rim for the soap to be in, the outer case, and I really like how it looked. I don't think you can really see it that well from the camera here, the lighting. But it has that wood grain look, so I really like that. So I'm just going to cut a little piece here to see what's going on. Now, if push comes to shove and the soap is just, I don't think it's a lot heavy, but it could be. But if it is, after I test it, after it sits for, maybe in this case, four to five weeks or longer, I would test the soap, make sure that it's, does, that it's not lye heavy and that the lye did cook out of the soap or cure it out of the soap, more or less. Uh, it's a little soft there. And if once I test it and it still has a heavy lye or the lye is still in it, then I would go to plan B, which would be to do the hot process method. That is when you put it in a crock pot and you just kind of, I don't know, shave it all off and or cut it all up and put it in the hot, in the crock pot and cook all the lye out of it. You lose a lot of this pretty decoration and designs, but you still save your soap and it's still wonderful and it's still a do, a do what it's supposed to do as a soap. Oh, okay. I can see a lot of glycerin rivers. It almost like trans translucent, where you can almost see like a clear soap there in there. I don't know if you can see that, but I can actually see some clear soap. So it's almost like, um, like it just got so hot. And like I said, I put it on 270 to, to put it through the gel phase, and I actually cut it off. So it's no different from what I normally do with my soap. But this time, it's a little different. Now, like I said, I would let it cure and see to make sure it's not lye heavy or anything like that. I don't have any lye in it. Because after it cures for that period of time, if it still have lye, then I'm going to assume that uh, something else is going on with it. And, and just put it in a crock pot and redo it. So I don't know if you can see all the glycerin rivers. They're really pretty, but uh, certain areas it's like translucent. That you can actually see a clear soap. <laughs> so it's almost like this soap got so hot, so heated up that it was almost going to turn into like a, a glycerin soap. <laughs> Maybe a clear soap. Something, I don't know. Oh my goodness. But it's really pretty. I, I really, I'm really happy with the, uh, the design. I'm not happy how the soap <laughs> How the soap just kind of slid off of the soap there. How the soap ice and slid off the soap. 
So once I let it sit for a little bit, I'll be able to uh, kind of tell a little bit what's going on with it. But I really like the, uh, the rim part. The rim part was supposed to give you like the TV look. <laughs> supposed to have like a, that look of wood. So I don't even know if you can see or get, get a good look there of the... Let's see if I can try to... Not doing good with the light in there. But I don't know if you can see the wood grain, but it's really pretty. Now, the rim, uh, the wood grain is not perfectly cut, as you can see. I don't know if you could tell, but I gave it my best there. Like I said, oh my goodness, all my hard work. All my beautiful flowers, they just melted off the soap. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen with soap. But most of the important thing about it is that it does work. You know, once I test it, make sure it's not lie heavy or, or it's completely all the lies out of it. Then I will test it to make to see how it leather up and see how it works. This is probably an, uh, another one of those soaps that will just be with me and the family. So with that being said, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you go over and watch all the other uh, collab soap uh, makers there. Okay. Thank you so much again. Have an awesome and a blessed day. Bye now.